Good morning to everybody. I'm David Rapicavoli. Today I will talk about an automatic procedure for the structural assessment of railway masonry arch bridges, based on the recent modeling strategy named Discrete Macro Element Method. The procedure is automatic since a parametric input procedure is implemented that allows to obtain the 3D computational model, the definition of the traffic load to apply on the bridge and the corresponding nonlinear static analysis. The safety assessment of existing bridge is a crucial aspect in the management and the maintenance of railway infrastructures. Historically, several bridge collapses occurred, some of which have also resulted in victims and injuries in some cases. Recently, in Italy, we observed an increment of number of collapse cases. In particular, it was observed, as reported in this table, that the average of cases since 2011 up today is equal to 1.5 failures per year. This situation inducted the public opinion and the public organizations to check the structural safety of existing bridges. The modeling of historical bridges structures have to take into account several issues. In particular, the masonry arch bridges have been constructed according to all design strategies. The original design drawings are not available and the several parts are not accessible. The pike backfield contribution is not easy to evaluate and uh, the masonry piers are generally not homogeneous being a result of a perimeter stiff masonry wall confining a rubble masonry nucleus. Creep phenomena are very important because uh, they lead to a redistribution and uh, an expected collapse. External spandrel walls uh, can influence the structural response uh, and the uh, masonry texture can play a fundamental role. Another problem is the score action at the foundation of piles and abutments. In this context, several simplified and detailed computational strategies have been proposed in the literature. These are mainly based on finite element method in the distinct element method, rigid body spring model. At the level of global discretization, we can distinguish one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional models. The type of analysis that can be executed are nonlinear static analysis or limit analysis. In terms of discretization strategy, we can distinguish a macro element or macro portions approach or a mesoscale or realistic approaches in which all small parts is modeled by a computational element. FEM and DEMA models require an expertise knowledge in the 3D modeling and in the interpretation of the numerical results. Limit analysis models allow to obtain the collapse load multiplier only without any information about the tactility and the deformability of the structure, so it's not usable for the seismic vulnerability assessment. Another important question is the evaluation of the contribution of the backfill, which represents an important aspect since its contribution on the bearing capacity is not negligible. Another strategy to model measure structures is based on the discrete macro element method. In this case, the measure is divided into macro portions identified as macro elements whose behavior is simulated by an equivalent mechanical element. This equivalent mechanical element can be represented by a quadrilateral articulated with two diagonal links introduced to simulate the nonlinear shear deformability of the mesury, and a set of nonlinear links for the interface in order to connect two adjacent elements. The macro element is capable to describe the main failure mechanism of measuring elements, namely flexor failure, shear diagonal failure, and shear sliding failure. However, the computational cost of the proposed numerical approach is greatly reduced in comparison to that involved in traditional nonlinear finite element simulation. In particular, the mechanical interaction among the adjacent macro elements is concentrated in zero thickness nonlinear interfaces, calibrated according to a straightforward fiber strategy. The mechanical shear behavior of the macro element is evaluated adopting an elastoplastic constitutive law, which initial stiffness is evaluated in order to get the same deformability of an homogeneous equivalent plate.
The strength is a function of the effective strength, according to the Morculum or Tunsek-Kovic yielding criteria. The sliding, the sliding interaction between two adjacent macro elements is evaluated adopting an elastoplastic constitutive law, which strength is a function of the effective normal stress, according to the Morculum yielding criterion. The modeling strategy based on the method of discrete macro elements evolved to simulate other structural problems. The in-plane macro element that we looked at before introduced the possibility to simulate the in-plane behavior of masonry walls. The 3D macro element introduced the in-plane and out-plane behavior of masonry walls by means of 3D interfaces, where the line distribution of flexural nonlinear links was replaced by a 2D distribution of nonlinear links. The irregular 3D macro element introduced the possibility to model structures with curved geometry like arches, vaults, and domes. By removing the hypothesis that the interfaces has to be orthogonal to the plane of the macro element. The irregular 3D macro element with the interfaces on all edges introduced the 3D interaction on all edges of the macro element. The last version of the regular 3D discrete macro element is based on the following hypothesis. The, kin the kinematics of each macro element is governed by 7 degrees of freedom only, 6 degrees of freedom to describe the in and out plane rigid body motions, 1 degree of freedom related to the in-plane shear deformability. The geometry of the macro element is regular. The interfaces are not orthogonal to the shear plane of the element. The hypothesis of a constant thickness has been removed in order to model structures with a variable thickness. The calibration procedures of the flexural links are still based on a fiber approach. The flexural and membranous behaviors are governed by nonlinear links orthogonal to the rigid faces of the interfaces. The application fields of the discrete macro elements method were extended to other types of structures in order to simulate the in-plane and out-plane collapse mechanisms of mesory walls or the collapse mechanism of covered shell geometry structure the collapse mechanism of historical masonry buildings. The last studies was oriented to the evaluation of the bearing capacity of masonry archer bridges subjected to the traffic load and to the seismic action. In the current work, the Cisano bridge was studied to assess the bearing capacity under traffic load. It is located in the north of Italy, in the municipality of Cisano Bergamasco at kilometer 17 plus 428 on the national railway system between Ponte San Pietro and Calciocorte sessions. It was built in 1862 at the same time of the construction of the railway. It spans over Sona River and the Via Sona Provincial Road with a total length of 112.4 meters in the width of 5.55 meter. The railway served by the bridge consisted of a single electrified track allowed to reach a maximum velocity of 60 km per hour. The nine arches of the bridges are separated by eight piers and two abutments, and the central arch over the Sona River is larger than the others being almost twist length, which with a span length of 18 meter and 1.15 meter constant thickness. The structure is a suffering of several cracks and damages, which are in evolution. The bridge is currently monitored by total stations and accelerometers in order to identify changes of the response in the time. It's possible to recognize horizontal cracks in the walls, vertical cracks in the piers, crack patterns between the arches and bolts, damage in general in the at the crown of the spandrel wall, 
proposed discrete macro element method has been implemented in the ISRA bridge code, specifically devoted to measuring arch bridges. The software allows to model typical measuring arch bridges with the aid of a parametric graphical user interface that facilitates the input of the geometry, the mechanical properties of the materials and the loading conditions. The ISRA model developed required 150,000 degrees of freedoms, then 155,000 degrees of freedom required by Lusa's model. So the discrete macro element model required a lower computational effort than the finite element model without loss of inaccuracy in the numerical results obtained. Currently, no experimental tests have been performed for evaluating the mechanical properties of the measure. So the numerical simulation have been performed by considering typical average value of the mechanical characteristics for the measure topologies of the bridge according to the Italian code. The backfield contribution has been considered assuming suitable material properties consistent to typical values reported in the scientific literature. The ISRA model is firstly validated in the linear field through a comparison between the results obtained by the LUSAS model in terms of the first three frequencies and the corresponding vibration modes. Then the discrete macroelement model is adopted for performing nonlinear static analysis of the entire bridge under different loading conditions. In the slide, we can see a good comparison of the first three frequencies and the corresponding vibration modes obtained by the two modeling approaches. In order to assess the ultimate load capacity, it was performed several nonlinear static analysis of the entire bridge under different loading conditions, adopting the arc length method. The traffic load due to the train convey as simulated by a uniform line load solution applied on the central axis of the binary, adopting different loading lengths. The graph on the right reports the pushdown curve obtained for the load distribution shown in the picture on the left. In the abscissa is reported the vertical displacement of the control point, while the vertical load applied is reported in the ordinates. The influence of the position of the load distribution on the linear response of the bridge was investigated. Here we can see the results obtained by 20 nonlinear static analysis performed for 20 different positions of the train load, which was modeled adopting a line load solution. The ultimate collapse configurations are reported in sequence in terms of deformed shapes and plastic deformations. The values of the collapse load multipliers obtained by means of the 20 nonlinear static analysis are reported in the graph on the right as a function of the loading length. The minimum value of the collapse load multiplier is equal to 2.16, corresponds to a line load distribution applied between the abscissa 0 to 2 abscissa 67.54 meter. It is evident how the collapse load multiplier reduces when the loading distribution involves the central larger arch. So we can go to the conclusions. In the present work, a recently introduced discrete three-dimensional macroelement method for carved measuring structure has been applied to a multi-span measuring railway arch bridge characterized by a peculiar geometrical layout due to the presence of a la central larger arch, whose dimension is about twice the size of the other arches. The model is based on a discrete macroelement method that allows to reliable simulation of the linear and nonlinear response of measure bridges with a lower computational cost compared to the classical nonlinear FEM analysis. The equivalence between a measure portion and the corresponding macro element is based on a simple fiber discretization of the corresponding geometrically consistent measure portion, leading to a modeling strategy that does not require particular expertise, neither in the implementation 
or in the interpretation of the numerical results. In this work, fiercely, a linear elastic validation of the discrete macroelement model has been obtained by comparing the eigen properties of the investigated bridge with those obtained by a FEM simulation. Several nonlinear pushdown analyses for different loading conditions corresponding to diverse position of the train convey on the bridge have been performed. The obtained results have clearly shown the capability of the discrete macroelement method to be applied for the structural assessment and the health monitoring of railways masonry arch bridges, with a strongly reduced computational burden, compared to that required by nonlinear FEM strategies. Thank you all for your attention.